This is the day the Lord has made. Father, I'm ready to hear what you tell me. Morning by morning, the Lord of the worship, giving you glory. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege to welcome you for morning by morning. Let's lift up our hands and thank him for how good he's been to us. Father, we are saying thank you. All of the glory, honor, and praise belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning. Uh, we're back at our scripture, Genesis 1, verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form of void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness may the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus mighty name amen I want to use for a brief title the power of inspection father bless your word grant me utterance grant them entrance in Jesus name amen so we've been having a remarkable journey this, I believe, is the 20th day uh, of our time together. And we've been talking about the creation, or what some call the recreation of the world. And so we said the first thing was that the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the darkness because there was a lack of structure, there was void, darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the first thing was to hover, incubate, brooding over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. But there's something I saw here. The Bible now said, and God saw the light that it was good. Now, as I was studying the, the Bible, I saw that this phrase, and he saw that it was good, was repeated several times. Hallelujah. You see that in Genesis 1.4, Genesis 1.10, Genesis 1.12, Genesis 1.18, Genesis 1, 21, Genesis 1, 25, Genesis 1, by Genesis 1, 31, it says, Then God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Now, what that tells me is that God is not only a creator, God is an inspector. God is an inspector. God is not just a creator. God is an inspector. So every act of his creation in Genesis or recreation was punctuated by inspection. And he created it and saw that it was good, which means that after everything he created, he had a process of quality control in place to check if what he created was good. Hallelujah. Now, in dealing with this, we cannot arrive at quality, the quality of good, if we don't have a process of inspection or a process of examination. One reason why people end up mediocre is that they consider the process let's just go to the next thing let's just go to the next thing let's just go to the next thing what i saw that god did was until he satisfied what he had done as good he didn't go to the next and many times hallelujah we deceive ourselves hallelujah by moving on to the next having not satisfied the good of what we have done where we are a lot of people have a stepping stone mentality they didn't make good with where they were, and they just felt they could escape their lot, that lack of good to the next level. Let me tell you, if you're going to do well, it will be because where you left, you did well there, right? And you did good there. And then that good becomes a springboard for your next good, a process of examination and of inspection. Now, 
If you see this as stress, that tells me you're not going to be excellent. Amen. In the bid to avoid stress, many of us have embraced mediocrity. There should be a checking process. Okay, so you write a mail. You should check and check and check to see if it is good before you go to the next. Now, when what is not good about what you do is discovered by the end user, it's because we are mediocre. It should be the discovery of what is not good about a product or a service or a thing should be discovered internally. There should be internal processes. Now, 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 it was not man who was saying it's not good. No. God himself put a process of inspection, examination, and vetting and quality control in place before he went on to the next thing. And so it was good to 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 very good. Because God is not just a creator. God is an inspector. And we will do well, hallelujah, to learn from this. I want to say that sincerely, we need a major quality revolution in the body of Christ. Because when you look at the world, the world does things and they do their things with a lot of quality. You, you, you go to, for instance, uh, if you go to a world hotel and you're looking at how things are done five star. You go to a Christian retreat and you look at how the things are done with no star. As if mediocrity is supposed to make us closer to God. Hallelujah. We must become a people who understand the power of inspection. The power of inspection. In this regard, inspection means that you should have defined a particular standard and then you are trying to conform what you have created to the standard you have set. So in Hebrews 8 verse 5, we see a scripture that says, see that you make all things according to the pattern that is shown you on, on your mouth. So there is a standard that has been revealed. And then you are now trying to conform what you are doing on the earth to the standard that has been revealed in heaven. So we cannot get to this quality without defined standard. We have defined this standard. Hopefully, the standard we are trying to conform to is the standard of heaven. So he says, see that you do all things according to the pattern I've shown you on the mouth. And by this, Hebrews chapter 8 now said, he obtained uh, a more excellent ministry. You see that? So excellence is not an accident. Excellence is a function of your commitment to adhering to standards. Hallelujah. And you cannot know whether you are adhering to standard or deviating from standard, if there's no process in place to check, he saw that it was good. 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 Then verse 31, he saw that everything he had been was very good. And then he crossed over to the next level. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. This is how to do life. Therefore, must not see the process of inspection, examination as stress. In fact, let me tell you, the tougher the examination systems, the greater the quality prospect, the quality, the tougher. For instance, there are drugs that, if I'm to take drugs, uh, if I'm to take drugs, if I should take drugs, I prefer to take drugs from certain nations because their food and drug administrations are sophisticated. Amen? And there are other places where anything goes and I don't want to risk my life. Why? They have rigorous standards of evaluation. It's not stress. Rigorous standards of evaluation to be ensure that nothing, no, no nonsense, you know, passes through their gates. Later on, you see that Jesus... Paul was talking about this. He was talking about in approving in all things what is excellent. That you, you are to approve in all things what is excellent. But we can't get there without making sure that we are people of inspection. Now I saw something in, in Exodus chapter 39 and verse 43. 
after they had created the tabernacle, Moses now inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses blessed them. Notice he did not bless them before inspecting. He inspected it to see if they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. And so he blessed them. This is how we should begin to do things. Hallelujah. We should inspect every area of life to say, are we inspecting? Are we doing this according to what God has commanded? Only then will we qualify for the blessing of God. Hallelujah. So I'm saying here, let's not just go from job to job to job. Let's analyze. Let's not go from marriage to marriage to marriage. Let's analyze. Let's not go from relationship to relationship. Let's analyze. Let's not go from ministry to ministry. Let us have a process in place that examines what was good. Hallelujah. What was good. Until he saw that it was good. He did not, it was good. He didn't go to the next. And this is how we should live our lives. We must become not just creators, but inspectors. Hallelujah. Our goal, therefore, should be that we discover what is not right about us, not the end user or the customer or the world discovers that we discover. We search ourselves and we know ourselves. We search our hearts and inquire rooms to know the areas in which we're missing it. And we do our best to fix it. Hallelujah. So, God is not just a creator. God is an inspector. An inspection means we define the standards and we're conforming everything we do standards that have been revealed or the standards that have been set for us. I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, your life, your ministry, your family will measure up with divine standards in Jesus' mighty name. Become an inspector today. Haven't done anything. Once you write a thing, inspect it. Once you produce something, inspect it. Hallelujah. And until that thing is good, do not let it go. Let me wrap up by saying this. If you allow mediocre things come out of you, you will develop a reputation for mediocrity. And a reputation for mediocrity will hurt your chances to play in the major leagues of life. That's how we have to be inspectors. Hallelujah. Pray. God will give us the grace to walk in this. In Jesus' mighty name. It says, see that you do all things according to the standard that's shown you on the mount. See that you do all things according to the standard that is shown you on the mount. Listen to me. There's a standard. And the fact that you're ignorant of the standard does not mean that there's no standard. There is a standard. Hallelujah. And we must become a people who seek to adhere to standards. My prayer for you this morning is that in the name of the Lord Jesus, this year 2024, God will begin to reveal his heavenly standard to you in Jesus' mighty name so that you can stand a chance. There is a standard. If your husband is a standard, your wife is a standard, your children is a standard expected of you. And I pray that the grace to conform everything you are doing to the standard God has set will be given to you so that you will obtain a more excellent ministry, a more excellent business, a more excellent marriage in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that the spirit of revelation will begin to open your eyes to God's standards of measurement, God's standard of evaluation in the name of the Lord Jesus and grace will be given to you to catch up with God's standards in Jesus' mighty name. Our God is not just a creator, our God an inspector. I pray also that we will not be found wanting in Jesus' precious name. Somebody says, Amen. God bless you with grace in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow.